Alright, today I'm going to show you how to render video game footage at the best possible quality in Sony Vegas Pro. Your videos will go from looking like this. These are the standard render settings in Sony Vegas. So looking like this. First of all, don't worry about all this nonsense. My Sony Vegas is a mess because I usually work on two monitors and I've had to push everything onto this monitor. So that aside, let's get started. First of all, when you open up a new project, we want to go up to the video preview window and we want to click on this cog here, which will bring us the project properties. Now, what we want to do here, I already have all mine set up in here. It says, always use. Don't know why I named it all in caps, but there you go. And I'll just go through this. Oh, actually I am going to have to change a few things. So very quickly, if we go to width, obviously you want that to be 1920 by 1080. You can go higher if your computer is capable of rendering. That's perfectly fine. HDR, uh, I have mine off. I mean, again, if your computer can render it, go higher. Okay, now frame rate. We want that at, well, as high as it can go, 60. Or as it says here, double NTSC, 59.94, whatever that says. I can't really read it from over here. And pixel aspect ratio, we want that to be at 1000 square. As for field order, it depends on what you was recording with. If your video is stuttering up and down, sort of jumping up and down, I'll put an example up here, you are gonna have to go into upper field Otherwise, use no progressive scan. If upper field doesn't work, try lower field. One of these will work, but there is no definitive answer here. You're just gonna have to check for yourself. Just experiment with that, see how it looks. Other than that, everything else will be smooth. We go into pixel format. Let's set that to 32 bit floating points. If we was to set it to full range, the whole thing goes a lot darker and looks disgusting so let's keep it at 32 floating point video levels full resolution rendering quality we do not want good we want the best motion blur type keep this at Gaussian the interlace method we want to keep that at blend fields and resample mode we want disable resample because as we all know, resample looks disgusting, especially on video game footage. Alright, and that's it. If we go down here, now you're not going to be able to see the bottom of my screen because unfortunately my monitor resolution is set too high, but we just go to, and if I click it twice, apply. Let's go up to the top now, and we want to save it as something that you'll always find, such as always use, for example. Click the floppy disk. And that's it, saved, all done. Uh, we want to click this here, start all new projects with these settings. Uh, we just take that and that's it, press OK. Right, now with that done, all we need is to import our videos that we want to use. Now I've already imported mine, so I'm just going to insert them into the timeline and it's going to give you this message that says, do you want to set your project's video settings to match this media? We want to click no, because we've already adjusted our project settings. So, let me get a slice of this. Okay, so if the video footage you've imported is already HD, you don't need to do this step. I'm going to put a timestamp below so that you can skip this bit. However, if your video is SD, there's just a little simple trick you can do. I'll show you now. Click on the video event effects. And we want to go into uh, Smart Upscale. Click on that and click add and we want to look for sharpen click on that and click add which by the way sharpen is a very underrated feature it looks very nice in sony vegas so in here smart upscale we want to crank that all the way up to four as for sharpen we leave that exactly as it is now although sharpen on sony vegas looks great especially if it's old video game media you may want to consider whether or not you actually want to add Sharpen because it is very expensive. Sharpen will triple, triple your render time. So do be cautious of that. 
Uh, I would suggest maybe rendering 10 seconds of a video or something with sharpen on and 10 seconds with it off and just sort of compare and see what you think. Now for one final thing that we need to do and this is very important, we grab pan crop and we just drag it all the way over here so that it's at the end. This should always be here. I don't know why Sony Vegas leaves it there, it should by default be here at the end of all the tabs that you've added. Uh, I will explain why now, I maybe will save that for a future video, just for now bear in mind that that's where it needs to be. Okay, and that's it. Okay, now that everything is done, right click on your video, go all the way down to properties, we click this, reduce interlace flicker, and disable resample. Make sure you do this before you start cutting the video up, otherwise you're going to have to go through the properties on every single clip and do this every single time. It's just another one of those things that Sony Vegas does. I don't know why it's so insistent on resample, because it just does not look good. <sighs> Alright, that's it. Just as a side note, maybe really think about adding sharpen before you do because if your computer is as bad as mine it will just completely freeze okay so i've just added my second clip and what we do now if we go all the way over here to if i zoom in the original clip that i added uh don't mind this this is because the audio is out of sync that was a recording issue on my end no problem we right click on this if I just move this out of the way ever so slightly so you can see what I'm doing. Move this over here. <laughs> Don't have a lot of room to work with. So we right click on this. We click copy. And then go to the new clip. If you look here. Now we right click on our new clip that we've just added. And all we do is press paste event attributes and that copies and pastes everything you've done on this onto this it hasn't however copied the properties so we still have to go in here and we still have to deinterlace and we still uh, reduce interlace and disable resample we'll do that press ok you do have to do that every time again i don't know why what we do now if let's say we're ready to render click on here above the timeline Hold and drag across. Okay. And we get this. Now what we do is we're going to file and render as. Okay, so these are all formats. What I do is go into Sony AVC MVC and I made a new template. If we click on internet 1920 by 1080 30p and click on customize template okay what we're doing here leave everything as it is however what we do want to change is frame rate knock that all the way up to double ntsc if you want to render in 4k we go up to here and click custom frame size and we change this to 3840 to 160. However, I don't trust my computer is capable of rendering in 4K, so I'm going to stick with 1920 by 1080. So we go up to where it says internet, and just like we did before, give it a name. I call mine, ooh, I can't remember what I call mine actually, but let's just call this. YouTube 1920 by 1080 60 FPS. Click on the save. And there you go. Now what that does is it brings it up in here somewhere. Right here at the bottom. All you want to do is click the star. You can see I have quite a few. And all we have to do in future is go into render options. It should bring you up automatically. At Sony AVC MVC now if that's the previous format you used to render if not just look for this and then click on the template that you have given the pink star to and there you go and then click render and that's 
everything. Alright. Bye.